What's up everybody, Chad Allen here and welcome back to Firechild Video, Back to the Basics, Episode 4. We're going to continue modeling. So this is modeling part 2. Uh, this one's actually going to be real quick because there's only a couple things I needed to mention. Um, what I have here, that I didn't get to in the last part, what I have here is I have our Blender logo and then the first letter of Blender, which is actually a pretty poor modeling job. I just kind of threw it together real quick so I can give you guys some, the tips that you're going to need. But uh, let's see, get back into that. But uh, what I wanted to point out is the logo I rendered, if I tab into um, edit mode, I mean, I built in curve modeling, which uh, if you're unfamiliar with curve or box modeling, go back to part three of Back to the Basics, where I covered the difference between box modeling and curve modeling, and uh, that'll get you up to speed. So your homework assignment was to model the logo, do some box modeling and some curve modeling. You'll see on the B here, I did box modeling, which that's actually, I, oops when I was re-recording the tutorial. Let's just, yeah, let's leave that there. Okay, ignore that line. That was something I did uh, on take one of this tutorial. This is like take three. Um, anyway, this is the B is box modeled. The logo is curve modeled. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to be able to extrude them. And extruding and smoothing out box models is different from curve modeling in the sense that we don't have, if we go over here, to our object panel, we don't have this nifty geometry panel where we can do width, extrude, bevel, all that. We don't have that when we do box modeling, as you can see. So what we need to do is go into edit mode. Actually, what we need to do is we need to add a modifier, because if you look here, this is not a very good example, because it was very crudely thrown together when I box modeled it. But you can see we still got some edges here that don't look very good, and that's where we add a modifier. Now, uh, I could probably do a separate tutorial on every one of these modifiers, but the one you're going to use religiously, pretty much, is going to be subdivision surface. It's going to be this one right here. You're going to use it a lot. And what it does is it adds extra geometry to smooth out edges and uh, give, give it a more high resolution look. So I go ahead and apply that and give it about a view of two, and you'll see we're already getting some smoother edges. Now, it's not perfectly circular here, because like I said, and when I originally modeled this, I kind of rushed through it just so I could get to this tutorial. But if I actually, let's see if I can back up a little bit. Uh, nope. Let's go tap in here. Let's see if I can take some of them out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm just getting back to where I should have been at the start of this tutorial. We apply subsurf, we give it a level two, and you'll see it smooths out a little too much. You know, we've got some smoothness in here. We can go in, you know, and tweak these, get them a little more rounded, go ahead and play with the points a little bit until you get something that, that is a little more plausible. Like so, you know. This is all part of box modeling. You're going to be spending a lot of time tweaking and manipulating and all this good stuff. But anyway, it's not going to look good because I didn't do it right, but that's all right. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to, to sharpen up these edges here because when we applied our subsurf, it rounded them off. And the easiest way to do that is just hit Control R and add some loops. Just push that up in the corner. That'll tighten that up. Control all he R here, push it that way. And, you know, there we go. Now it's smoother. It looks better, but I'm sure that uh, when you guys model it out, you'll take the time to do it right, and uh, all will be well. You can probably add a loop cut right in here. Or not. One there. And maybe one. Oops. No, 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 don't do that. I should take that one away. Push that one back there. And add one right there. Yeah. So there. Now we have our sharp edges here, 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 and everything looks better. But now we need to extrude it because it's still flat. Uh, easiest way to do that is just select the whole thing, hit extrude, drag it up on the Z axis as high as you want it. So now we have 3D, but it's real rounded on the edges here. So again, add some loop cuts. And that's this is just the very basics. And now you've got your sharpened edges. Maybe add one in here, add one down there. And there you go. Of course, yours will look better than mine. Uh, let's go ahead and take our shading over here in our tool panel, change it to smooth, and there we go. There's your box modeled. 
So I'm just going to delete that now because now we're going to talk about curve modeling and I don't want that box to get in the way. Okay, so this is curve modeling, which you'll see I just took uh, a combination of Bezier curves and circle curves. You know, I used a circle curve for this inner circle and then I used one for this outer circle, which Blender will automatically, you know, take everything in between those two and not apply a surface to it. And then curve modeled with Bezier curve this entire thing just by extruding the curve and positioning the points everything covered in the previous tutorial so now how do we extrude this one well it's a heck of a lot easier than uh, box modeling if we go to our data panel we've got these geometry settings we've got width we've got extrude extrude does exactly what it sounds like it extrudes it and then say we want to take away the sharp edge around the uh, model well we've got bevel as well which as you can see it'll give you a nice beveled edge the resolution will be the smoothness of that edge or the sharpness you know zero and you've got this real sharp beveled edge kick up the resolution and it smooths it out and it gives you a really cool look now that looks pretty good so that is a quick overview of, of uh, finalizing our, our modeling with um, box or curve modeling uh, is really should have been something part of the last tutorial but like I said I wanted to keep them kind of short I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information at once because uh, this series is for you beginners and uh, I don't want to go overboard so now you know how to extrude your logo so after the last tutorial you've got it in 2d now you know how to pull that out into 3d and uh, I mean there's other options here I highly suggest going in here and playing with your different options for your 2D and your 3D and all that good stuff and uh, you know just play around with with the different modeling settings uh, if you want to go ahead and model out the entire word blender and you can do that with curves or box modeling a matter of fact I would highly recommend doing it one with each you know there is a text panel but you know practice and that's what this is for this is for practice so go ahead and model that out in part five we've only got two parts left we've got five and six part five is going to be materials and textures part six we're going to give you a brief overview of your render panel and that'll round out the basic training and then uh, you guys will have all the skills you need to move on to some more intermediate and advanced stuff i hope you're learning something i hope you're practicing because uh you know you can't fly until you've learned to uh well, until you've learned to run, and you can't run unless you've learned. I, I don't know. My grandfather told me that one day. I have no idea what he was talking about. Anyway, I'm going to close this out now. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you here bright and early tomorrow with Part 5, Modeling and Textures. Take it easy, guys, and get to blending.